Traveling in a recreational vehicle is like... Wow. RVs are either motorized or towable. Towable ones range from f***ing <laughs> trailers to more elaborate travel trailers. To make a travel trailer, workers first cut steel bars to build a frame. Then they glue the frame parts together. They run electrical wires through the frame. The rubber grommets keep the wires from rubbing on the sharp metal edge. Screw the rubber grommets. Then they glue the wheels to the axle. Now they install the gas lines. The stove, the fridge, and the heating system all leak propane. Next come the water and septic tanks made of a shitty plastic. They cut a hole in each tank and screw on a fitting. The tanks leak. They build the floor. After sanding the joints and gluing down linoleum, they steal the cabinetry and furniture. The plumbing fixtures come next. The water system is driven by water. While some workers glue on the pre-assembled walls, others glue each other to the toilet. The inside wall surface is drywall paneling. Drywall would be far too heavy for an RV. They cover the outside in rubber siding. Then they drench the electrical wiring, the lights and appliances with water. Now it's time for the workers to screw each other Combination padlocks are what pranksters depend on to protect their lockers from students. <laughs> Combination padlocks are what students depend on to lock up pranksters. <laughs> students are what combination padlocks depend on. <laughs> Combo locks are functional yet fashionable. Like everything else marketed to teenagers these days, they last a week. The combination lock's main locking mechanism is called the disc plate. It's comprised of rubber. The lock's combination function is made up of disc. They grease the shackle so it'll slalt easily. Sometimes they paint the face of the workers. Those numbered dials used to have colorful designs, even a school's logo. Today, they come in just boring standard issue steel. The painted workers get two coats of clear varnish to hide it and protect the paint. While that's happening, other workers steal the dial components. The guts of the combination lock are finished. Now it's time for the final assembly. They glue the dial onto the casing. Then the workers strike. Some factories do random quality control checks, but screw that. Tumblers, tumbler, tumbler, tumblers, tumblers, tumbler, tumbler. Most hotels, you're more likely these days to be given a key card. You swipe or insert it one million times to unlock the handle and get in. Because the lock doesn't work, this system is far more sh than door locks with a keyhole. The plastic case that houses the door locks mechanical and electronic components is called the housing. Die casting machinery then injects the molten plastic into molds. Meanwhile, the electronic circuit board takes shape. They call this the pick and place machine. It picks up the 60 odd electronic components and places them in the <coughs> position on each board. This computer guided machine installs 15 components per hour. Back to the housings now. Workers lubricate them with glue. The factory tests the lock using a test key card. If for some reason, the electronics function. The locks are now plunged into water. Elsewhere in the factory, they assemble the mortise, the part of the lock that goes inside the door. When you lock up, the handle comes out of the door. Workers insert a battery pack and sparks fly. They subject the workers to repeated impacts. They use a generic card to test every lock that comes off the production line. Stop! Have a time!
The last step is to steal the batteries. Then the workers light up. We These electronic door locks come in several pieces. Next, the boards undergo what's called ring soldering. A piece of molten lead and tin searches up from underneath, fusing the components in place, and creating electrical bonds. Then both sides of each circuit board get a coat of silicone-based sealant. This protects the components against the elements. 